friends. So today we're going to be making edible Play-Doh using only two ingredients. So I have a daughter who has a wheat allergy. So regular Play-Dohs and traditional Play-Doh recipes are out for us. So I was alerted to this amazing recipe a few months ago. And I'm going to share it with you all because first of all, it's edible and delicious. And second of all, it's free of wheat which is a common allergen. So the first ingredient you're going to need is the whipped icing, preferably in a white color. So if you use chocolate icing, your uh, Play-Doh will be brown. If you use strawberry icing, your icing will be pink or your Play-Doh will be pink. Um, I use two containers of this and this is 14 ounces. You will also need powdered confectioner sugar. Um, I had about this much in a bag left over and then I used all of this bag. So um, I'll share some videos of me making the Play-Doh in a little bit, uh, but just so you know, I use more about two cups of the powdered sugar for every cup of icing that I use. And of course, when you're mixing it, you will know the consistency that you want. You want it to not stick to your hand. So you're going to need some measuring cups, preferably a towel to wipe your hands on because this gets really messy and to wipe down the area. You're going to need a lot of bowls, especially if you're making a lot of different colors. Um, a spoon, spatula, some sort of mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you can mix this by hand. Make sure you're using a spatula. You're also going to need, again for this activity, food dyes. You can use gel dyes this time. Um, they do have more color options. For me, I used um, liquid food coloring dyes and I have made the three primary colors because you guessed it, we are going to be mixing and making this into a color lesson. So other optional things, once your Play-Doh is made, you can also have cookie cutters for stamping and making different shapes. And I also have with me the textured rollers for rolling out the Play-Doh. You don't have these, you can use any type of tube you might have in your house, a rolling pin or anything round and hard that you can roll along the Play-Doh to make shapes and forms. Okay, everybody, let's get started. So I'm actually going to be making rainbow Play-Doh. So I'm doing two cups of the powdered sugar and I'm going to be doing two cups of the icing. So I've already measured out one cup and I'm going to get this started mixing while I measure out the second cup. If you're wondering, you use almost an entire container of the 14 ounce fluffy white whipped icing if you're looking for um, a ratio. This I didn't even open. I had a little bit left over of a different bag. So I'm going to get this mixing while I measure out the second cup. Now as a pro tip, in the art room, we save these conta icing containers and we put art supplies in them. So we put use them for markers, but you can use them for all sorts of art supplies um, because they're nice and sturdy containers. You can also use them for water cups. Okay, so I've got the second cup measured, so we're gonna add that. Now the great thing about this Play-Doh recipe uh, than other Play-Doh recipes is that there's no wheat in this and all the ingredients are edible and it's gonna be so yummy and delicious when we're finished. We're looking a little bit sticky here still, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the sugar 
just so we're not too sticky with all of the icing. And what we're looking here is more of like a fluffy consistency. So this is looking a lot better. I'm getting a lot less stick to my hand. And it is delicious. Moms, make sure you make this um, not around a meal time because they'll eat it all. It's so good. Okay, so we're looking really great here. I'm not getting any stick on my hands from this. Um, I'm liking the texture and consistency. Um, again, it is frosting and powdered sugar, so it is going to be still a bit sticky more than um, your normal Play-Doh. So I'm going to take this out of the bowl and I'm going to show you how to dye it. Okay, so I've taken out the majority of my Play-Doh and it's over here in this big bowl. I'm going to be dividing it again because I'm going to make three colors. So make sure you have a couple of bowls handy and nearby. So this is part of my dough. Um, we're gonna be using this as a color mixing activity. So I'm gonna be using only three colors, the three primary colors. So I'm using yellow, blue, and red today. So those are my three dyes. Now, this is gonna make your kitchen very messy, so make sure you have um, an adult handy and or you're listening to a sibling or you're doing a really good job of cleaning up your kitchen after this. If you don't have a mixer in your kitchen like this one, you can use a handheld mixer or you can also mix by hand. If you're mixing by hand, make sure you use a really big spoon, something like this or make sure you have a spatula like this for your mixing to help you mix a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm going to be making this into yellow. So I'm gonna put a lot of yellow dye in here. I'm gonna start the mixing. And if I don't like the color, I can always add more dye. So it's actually best to start with a little bit of dye and work your way up. Since we are doing a color mixing activity um, here at my house, I want to make sure the colors are a little bit brighter. Um, that way, when we mix the colors to make secondary colors, you can see the color a little bit better. So I'm gonna, I added a little bit more dye. We're going to mix a little bit more. I'll take this out and then we'll mix the next color. Okay, so I have red, yellow, and blue here of the Play-Doh that I've made and mixed the colors. So. What I wanna do is if I'm gonna make a complete color wheel, I wanna grab off a little bit of the red and a little bit of the yellow. Now, something that I tell my art artists in my classroom is that you wanna use a little bit more than red um, to make a really good color. So red and yellow make orange. So I don't have my little artists here with me yet. They'll be here in a minute and I want to mold and twist and mix to make a new color, which is going to be orange. Now I'm working with some pastel colors, so mine are gonna be a little bit pastel. And I wanna make a little ball of red and a little ball of yellow. So now I've got three colors of my six color color wheel. So the next color I wanna take is I want to mix um, some yellow and some blue. Now yellow and blue make green. 
So now I'm going to twist and shape and mix my colors so that I get the new color green. Again, these are gonna be pastel colors. So my friends that are used to working with bright, vibrant tempera paints, these colors are gonna be a bit lighter than what you're normally used to. Okay, and now I want to add blue. We're almost done with a color wheel. And so my last color, I'm gonna mix blue and red. So I want some blue, and then I want some red. So blue and red make purple. And the fancy word for purple is violet. And now I'm going to mix these two together. I'm gonna get a violet shade. And that completes my color wheel. Now from here I can do so many things. I can take my Play-Doh, I can flatten it out with my hands, I can make shapes, I can also get a new color, roll it out with anything you have at home, so these are a textured roller and they'll leave an imprint or a stamp. Have fun with this, guys. I've also saved some white. So you can add white to any of these colors to make them lighter. And if you wanna make a really light pink color, you can add a lot of white and a little bit of red and you can get pink. So have fun, guys. I can't wait to see what you create. Um, have a blast with this, but make sure you're mixing the colors to make a color wheel. Have a great day, friends.